What's up guys, Eric here with driverlineup.com, World's Located Steering Wheel Holder, and Jenna. <laughs> Second time trying to make this damn video, because Remy knows we're making a damn video. <laughs> and she whines and cries. Only does it when we're both making a video. Anyway, we uh, are on our way out of Texas. We had a relatively amazing experience at a shipper this morning, outside of one glaring, embarrassing situation. We were supposed to be live load at the shipper. We were going to Denver. And uh, got there and found out it was going to be a drop and hook, which is like, yay, right? Well, you're missing a lot. Hold so on. I'm telling the whole, I'm setting this up. Got there and uh, found it was going to be a drop and hook, which is, which is great. And uh, this shipper it's Saturday so well I have to yeah, take tell, it from the top yes take it from the top okay so we get there and this place opens at 8 a.m. but it's one of those particular places where um, they won't take you any earlier than 15 minutes and so they just open we get there you know right before 8 a.m. I go in and there's another female driver checking in um, at the little window and she's like she clearly knows the lady who works behind the counter and is like oh you know I got something for you come outside or whatever so I'm filling out my paperwork my little check-in sheet you know your your uh, load number and everything tractor trailer license plate numbers and stuff so that they have it all the input into their computer I have it filled out and then I'm standing at the window and I'm like this lady hasn't come back like so I'm standing there for a couple minutes and um you know about five minutes come by and then the lady opens the driver's entrance door and it's like oh my god I'm so embarrassed I'm not ignoring you I locked myself out and I'm the only person here outside of the guy in the warehouse and I'm like, oh my God. She's like, I left my keys on my desk. I came out to grab coffee creamer from, from you know, Debbie, uh, the other driver lady that she knew. And she's like, and now I locked myself outside. She's like, Debbie's knocking on doors, knocking on trailers. Like, can you stand here and like, wait, if you see somebody, I'm gonna go knock on another door. And she's like frantic at this point, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, this is so terrible. So, um, she knocks and knocks and nothing and she's like I don't even have my cell phone I'm like do you want to borrow mine and she's like I don't know his number the warehouse guy and I'm like oh well I guess we're just gonna have to wait so you know a few minutes come by she finally you know or go by she finally goes into the office I'm like well you deal with this check-in sheet I'll be right back I come to the truck I'm like this lady's having a terrible day give me a stack of Hershey's so because Hershey's always takes care of us and gives us a lot of candy bars so I come back and I give her Hershey's she immediately snaps into one and is like oh thank you you know and uh, I'm like you know things happen you know no big deal I was like you know we've locked the keys in the truck at Walmart you know in a dock like it, it happens so she starts feeling better and she's like okay um, well your trailer's loaded so go ahead and drop your trailer by the fence and then grab um, the trailer from door 19 and then just pull forward and the guy will give you a seal and then come back and get your paperwork. And I'm like, you know, say less fam. Like, you know, no problem, I got this. And uh, so I come back to the truck and I tell Eric, hey, we're gonna go ahead and drop the trailer by the fence and uh, we're gonna go get the trailer from door 19. And yeah. yeah, so from uh, from my perspective and my view, and the and the direction we had come into this customer, from all appearances, very clean, very nice operation, nice building, nice doors, nice big long fence, the big long the, fence running down in front the, of the docks, yeah. and uh, at the end, straight ahead, at the end of where the docks are there's a little driveway that goes around the end of the building but it it kind of just looked like it was for four wheelers it didn't really because there's like bushes and stuff yeah it just didn't really it. seem it was like okay this is the property there's no more and this is clearly a big long fence yeah 
Now it did have a fire lane stripe going all the way down to the end, not on the curb, but mm -hmm. on, on the Because there the were pavement. spots of the curb that were just plain, you know, plain uh, cement color. Yeah. So uh, I'm like right here on the fence. That's where I dropped because I didn't go in and talk to them. I'm like right here on the on the fence. I'm like, yeah, right down here. There's no, there's no. There were red, no other drop no trailers. There's no red paint. Um, but it's, it was it's like just a plain color curb, and it, it, it's away from the docks. Like it's not blocking anybody getting in and out of the docks. This looks like a great place to drop uh, the there, trailer. There were no other drop trailers, but I'm like, okay. Well, because clearly they're really efficient. Because yeah. we're we're there early, and the trailer's already loaded. So this place is on the ball. Now I will say I didn't understand why they didn't want us to just take it to and put it in a dock because yeah. there were like half the docks were there were no trailers and there were no trailers right next to the trailer that we were supposed to pick up because a lot of times they'll just have you take your empty to a dock mm -hmm. especially when it's a dry like this is not a, a cold facility you know so because it's a dry load well and i'm thinking maybe there's a prime driver that they have coming in that's dropping a load there that they're going to be dropping at the dock and maybe they're needing an empty so that's why they just want the empties right there by the yeah. fence so anyway we i go circle around at the end in front of the empty dock circle around back the trailer up along this curb in this fire zone where i just you know it's like okay well, that's where we dropped the trailer even though it was weird because it was like our trailer's kind of sitting out there on its own um <laughs> along the fence in front of the docks and it felt weird but it was like you know that's where they want it that's where they want it i'm thinking this place is actually really cool and that's like you know they must have some really efficient process they're yeah doing. like they're like, not even they're like you know, they're like not thinking, even making us take it to a yeah, dock like, which would make total and, perfect sense yeah and thinking the next prime driver the next prime driver is going to be super stoked when they drop their loaded trailer at a dock and then here's a clean fuel clean inside clean outside brand new like trailer sitting two, in the fire zone by 220 the series you know trailer over here like this so, place is cool it's unique so we go you know we drop that trailer there and it's again i felt weird about it but i didn't really question it um it just seemed like a really odd place to leave a trailer, an yeah. empty trailer. But anyway, some places it, are weird. I, Everyone like does I, it different. You know, again, it felt weird, weird, but I didn't question it really at the time. Went to the dock where our trailer was, got underneath it, hooked it up. They had us pull it out a couple feet so that they could hand us the seal, close it up. And uh, then the guy actually said, just make a right to go out of here. Um, so I mean, he literally said that. Did he not say yeah, that? Yeah, he said, he said just make go a ahead, right. pull out, make a right, um, go back in the office, get your paperwork, and have a great day. Now, the second point that felt really odd to me is that when we did that, you're actually going towards the entrance, mm -hmm. and there's three yellow arrows, like three lanes coming through this gate that are all pointing, pointing like, into the direction. facility. There's no arrows pointing to go out. So it's like, okay, so we're going out of the entrance. Like, where's the where's the out part? Even though it wasn't busy, and I think that's why he told us just to go that way. But I go there, I park there. Jenna goes inside, gets the paperwork. And then while she's in there, other trucks come around the building where there's, I realize there's yellow arrows pointing out. So there's another area where you exit but they told us go ahead and turn right yeah so no we're, we're doing thinking, what he told us know, yeah we're doing okay, what he told us that's weird i think he just told us that because it's not busy yeah and there's not really any point in go but you know again i'm still thinking that the section we're in is the only section of this whole facility yeah but it did kind of start i did kind of start to wonder well how the hell do those trucks point, get over I there i haven't even noticed that because I'm doing yeah. a park call and stuff. So she comes out, gets, yeah, she's in the truck. We're getting ready, swapping drivers, all that good stuff. And uh, then when we left the facility and turned right, which is not the direction we came from, so we got to see the other side of the building, there's an entire other operation, like all docks on the other side of the building. Mm -hmm. And then along that fence line, 
is room to back trailers up to the, clearly to marked, the fence. Clearly marked spots for empty trailers. And there's like 20 empty trailers over yep. there. So there is a section for empty trailers and it is on a fence line. It's just on the other side of the building that apparently you can circle around the building and get to. And there was plenty of space for empty trailers. There's probably like 15 or 20 empty spots for empty trailers. So at that point, we, it became very obvious that we were the assholes. Well, unless that, unless that is like truly what she meant when she said just no, park it along the fence. Like no. may, maybe they plan on using it right away. <laughs> no, that is not what they meant. They did not mean leave the empty in the fire zone along a fence where there's no other empties when they have an empty drop lot on the other side of the building maybe, along the fence. Maybe they did. No, that is not. <laughs> so for about three miles, we were actually probably about five or ten miles, we were both going back and forth like feeling so bad. I was literally like, in tears laughing at how stupid we, I felt. We were already loaded and already rolling so clearly we're not going to stop find a place to turn around and go back to this customer and say hey we're going to drop our trailer and go move <laughs> that obviously that's not going to happen but it does make me think maybe circumstances like this are why mega carriers <laughs> have, a bad have some bad reputation <laughs> because it made us look so damn lazy but it could happen to anybody like the directions it were could. very specific it's just that there's Drop so the many of us it. we have 10,000 yeah. trucks and so. it makes you realize like when you see like a trailer that's parked really stupid that maybe there's somebody who takes things maybe very there was, extremely literal yeah maybe there um, was a good reason you know, for it so yeah it's one of those things because whenever we see somebody it's always like well why the hell did they do that and maybe they were in a similar situation so where they took something today very, we yeah. were unintentionally the asshole prime mega carrier truck because everybody that comes in there and goes out of there is going to see that weirdo empty prime trailer dropped in the fire zone in front of all the docks mm -hmm. when there's an empty lot on the other side of the building it'd be like what the who, what prime driver just dumped their empty trailer right there and, and there was no yard dog there yet and I don't even know if one's gonna come today but when a yard dog gets there he's really gonna be like WTF what seriously prime driver drop your trailer right here when there's the whole empty lot across you know on the other side of the building the, the empty trailer lot so oh, it was so embarrassing because so we look like the dick of the week yeah we do we, and we try really really hard to make prime look good in every way possible you know people bitch online about stuff like that and honestly i'm not saying this as a biased prime driver for the size of our fleet uh i feel like prime messes up far less than some other mega carriers like i feel like you know i think you see some of it online just because it's easy to rag on mega carriers when a prime truck hits a fixed object or, or drops a trailer somewhere. But there's mega carriers that do far, far worse. And we try really, really hard to make prime look good whenever possible. Almost three years of really nothing to be embarrassed about except today. <laughs> like that was definitely yep. just boneheaded, <laughs> you know? And it wasn't at the time and the reasons that it happened but as we're pulling out of that facility, it became very clear. Boy, if anyone just watched that happen, <laughs> they're gonna be like, really? Really, Prime, you just circled around and just dropped your empty right there? It's hard to describe without you being able to see it, but uh, I, I just tell you guys, <laughs> it, it became so blatantly obvious that we just look like dickheads. Like, no, I don't want to go over the empty lot. I just want to drop it right here, wherever I feel like it. <laughs> that's, that's what it looked like. But that was not the case. Like, we sincerely thought that because it wasn't super busy, the half the docks were empty, that she was just like, yeah, just take it over there and drop it, you know, wherever you find along the fence. That is not what she meant. <laughs> We didn't know it until we left. 
so hey it's all part of the adventure out here <laughs> it is what it is so that's what happened to us uh, anyway we finally have a load with a little breathing room on it so we're going to go into a, a swing into a Walmart here in a couple yeah, hours groceries. restock on some things we got about 10 days left on this truck uh, which is weird we finally got it washed this morning it's been as Lyle would say looking like money yeah. for a while it's it's been looking like it's been running so it's nice to finally have a little time. We actually have a lot of time on this load. Uh, we can drop it any time over the next four days and it's only 800 miles. So my plan is to take it and drop it in Denver tomorrow, early tomorrow so morning. So your plan is to run 200 miles a day? <laughs> no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna drop it early tomorrow morning with the hopes that we can then head over to Kansas and get a uh, cargo load in to PA by payroll cutoff not that that really matters but that would that would make this week like monumentally uh, stellar <laughs> if it works out that way so that's the plan it's Saturday hope you guys are having a great weekend if you're on the road as always be safe make good decisions don't leave trailers in fire <laughs> zones or at least question it <laughs> And as always, drive to thrive. We'll talk to you guys soon.